Welcome back YouTubers to my channel of an everyday life of an SB. If you're following me right now and you're new to my channel, I welcome you. I'm SB. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness, sharing my life stories as well, of those CD, especially syndrome and the like, along with tips and advice along the way on how you can manage and cope with these everyday situations of your medical conditions, regardless of what they are. And I'm hoping that regardless of what all give and take, just to give me a form of respect on it, because obviously some of the treatments I've been using or therapies or whatever I have shared in the past does work for me and it may work for you or may not but it's just a matter of just you know me being able to do the same thing for you guys respecting of your guys treatment but just bear that in mind and also maybe I just sit firmly suggest maybe just to take a little by little of these tips and advice of what I share with you or of some treatments that I have shared and see if it will work for you but just remember it won't happen in a day to help you because it's all in the motivation tool in our head so it has been brought to my attention obviously that I'm trying to do some of the nitty gritty details of some of the topics right now especially the one of domestic violence versus basically you know emotional abuse and all that as well as some parts about the psychopath sociopaths, psychopaths and narcissists so that we can get a clearer understanding when we're in an abusive relationship of the warning signs so that we can seek help for ourselves to keep us safe as well as if we've got any kids while we're in that form of relationship that we can keep our kids safe as well. But in order to do guys, obviously I know I'm going to get a bit of hate probably through this or whatever it may be but like I said this is something that is really what I am truly strong about. A strong firm believer that you know females or males depending who's the abuser or victim shouldn't have to tolerate with this and they need to feel safe obviously free from harm and everything else so this one's obviously going to be called psychopath and sociopath what is the difference so hopefully you're liking some of these videos smash the like to show the engagement or comment below just to let me know feedback is, would be really great here also maybe just to comment below also if I've missed out any key information or just maybe just for you guys to open up the floor of discussion for you guys that is relevant on these topics that I share that you can share your life stories and how you came about knowing the narcissist or what have you and how you actually went about it or if you just feel that you know I should be the one sharing the stories or whatever you know by all means that's fine or even if you just feel that you're still trapped in that relationship or feels don't forever fret there is hope out there there is you know help as well so be in mind though however whatever it may be so as I said let's begin this before I run out of time since I'm jabber jabbering the first question is what is a psychopath Obviously, a psychopath is a person that is suffering from chronic mental disorders with abnormal or violent social behaviours. It could be a man, man, mad woman, mad person or deranged person. That's what it's labelled as in one of the dictionaries I was reading. Can't remember what the dictionary was. So, how to tell if you're dealing with a sociopath or a psychopath. There has been t many years now been clearly suggested by many forensics psychologists, psychiatrists and criminologists that use this term sociopathy and psychopathy interchangeably however with this two, these two terms obviously and it has been lead to experts that they may have been for some time lead to some disagreements on whether there are meaningful differences, differences and differentiations between these two conditions there are however clear and significant distinctions between them. Obviously in the 5th edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Disorders, Mental Disorders, DSM-5, which I'm going to share more about this and the DSM-4 maybe later on, based on the autistic part of things as well, is that this has been released obviously by the American Psychiatric Association in 2013. Has listed both sociopathy and psycho under the heading of antisocial personality disorders on which I've clearly already addressed on my channel. These disorders share many common behavioural tra traits which leads to the confusion between these terms. These key traits that sociopaths and psychopaths share may include 1. A disregard for laws and social mores. 2. A disregard for the rights of others. 3. A failure to feel remorse or guilt. 4. A tendency to display violent behaviours. 
towards others. In addition to their com commonalities, sociopaths and psychopaths, however, also have their own unique behavioural characteristics as well. Sociopaths tend to be nervous and easily agitated. They are volatile and prone to emotional outbursts, including fits of rage. They are likely to be uneducated and live on the fringes of society, unable to hold down a steady job or stay in one place for a very long time. It is difficult but not impossible for the sociopaths, however, to inform attachments with others. Many sociopaths are able to form an attachment to a particular individual or group, although they may have no regard for society in general or its rules in place. In the eyes of others, sociopaths will appear to be very disturbed. Any crimes committed by a sociopath, including murder, will be tend to be haphazard, disorganised and spontaneous rather than planned. On the other hand, psychopaths are unable to form emotional attachments or feel empathy with others, although they may often have disarming or even charming personalities. Psychopaths are very manipulative and can easily gain people's trust. They learn to mimic emotions despite their inability to feel their own or feel, feel the actual emotions and will appear normal to unsuspecting people. Psychopaths are often well educated and will hold st steady jobs. Some are so good at manipulation and mimicry that they have families and other long-term relationships without those around them or ever, ever suspecting their true nature. When committing crimes, however, psychopaths carefully plan out every detail in advance and often have the contingency plans in place. Unlike, for the other hand, the sociopathic counterparts, criminals are cool, calm and meticulous. Their crimes, whether violent or non-violent, will be highly organised and generally offer few clues for authorities to pursue. Intelligent psychopaths may make excellent white-collar criminals and con artists due to their calm and charismatic natures. The cause of psychopathy is different than the cause of sociopathy, however. This has been believed that psychopathy is, the largely, is, is largely the result of nature, which is the genetics, while sociopathy is more likely the result of nurture, which is the environment. Psychopathy is related to the psychological defect that results in the underdevelopment part of the brain, which is responsible for the impulse control and emotions. Sociopathy, on the other hand, however, is more likely the product of childhood trauma and physical slash emotional abuse. Because sociopathy appears to be learned rather than innate, sociopaths are capable of empathy in certain limited circumstances, but not in others, and with a few individuals, but not others. Psychopathy is the most dangerous of all antisocial personality disorders because of the way psychopaths dissociate emotionally from the actions, regardless of how temporal those actions may be. Many prolific and notorious serial killers, including the like Ted Bundy and John Wayne Gacy and Dennis Rader, blind, torture, kill or BTK are unremissible psychopaths. Psychopathic killers view their innocent victims as inhuman objects to be tormented and violated for their own amusement. Okay, question is, you may be asking, how can you tell that you are actually dealing with a psychopath? Over many years, neurobiologists have identified several factors that are highly correlated or associated with the violent behaviour in people, which is, first, the failure to develop adequate coping mechanisms in childhood and associated with violent behaviour to later in life. Second of all, neglect and abuse by caregivers during childhood is linked to an increased risk of adult violence. Third, substance abuse, alcohol and jerk drugs is highly correlated with increased aggression and violence in adolescents and adults. Fourth, neurologists have linked childhood brain trauma to due to severe head injury due to violent behaviour in adulthood. Each one of these correlates of violence or factors which are often found in combination with it has been observed among violent criminals and murderers over the years. Although these factors are scientifically linked to violent behaviours, none of them individually or collectively, however, should be considered sufficient or even necessary for an individual to become violent. For forensic psychologists, however, that has discovered that certain key traits of violent behaviours are very consistent with an antisocial personality disorder known as psychopathy. This disorder is manifested in certain distinct and troublesome behavioural traits and characteristics, however. Psychopathy is not classified as a mental illness by the American Psychiatric Association, 
the fifth edition of Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or the DCM-5, that was released by the APA in 2013, lists psychopathy under the heading of antisocial personality disorders. The APA estimates that approximately 1% of the adult population in the US are psychopaths, however. Generally speaking, psychopaths are intelligent, glib and charming and use these attributes to manipulate others into trusting and believing in them. Because they often have strong interpersonal skills, psychopaths can present themselves quite favourably on a first impression basis and often function very successfully in society. However, a number of attitudes and behaviours common to psychopaths are distinctly pred predatory in nature. They tend to view others as either competitive pre predators or prey. When psychopaths view others as prey, they are their lack of feeling and bonding to others provides them unusual clarity in observing the behaviour of intended victims that they prey on. Moreover, they don't become encumbered by the anxieties and emotions that other people experience in interpersonal encounters. Psychopaths are unable to form emotional attachments or feel real empathy with others, despite their disarming or even charming Personality. Psychopathy is the most dangerous of antisocial personality disorders because psychopaths are very manipulative and can easily gain people's trust. They learn to mimic emotions. Despite their inability to actually feel them and appear normal to unsuspecting people, psychopaths are often well educated and educated well educated in a whole city job. Some are so good at manipulation and mimicry that they have families and other long term of their true nature. When committing crimes, however, psychopaths carefully plan out every detail and play. <clears throat> carefully plan out every detail in advance and often have conscious plans in place. Psychopathic criminals tend to be cool, calm, and meticulous. They make few mistakes and are never undone by their emotion. Not surprisingly, though, psychopaths are overrepresented among serial killers in the past and may be present among serial killers. When a psychopath becomes a serial killer, he or she will most likely be found among the FBI's organised killers who tend to be cold-blooded, meticulous planners. Charming, unflappable psychopath. Ted Bundy is a classic example of a poised, articulate and highly organised serial killer. It is believed that psychopathy is the result of nature, like I said. According to the late David Lykin, however, a behavioural geneticist known for studies involving twin psychopathy is related to a psychological or physiological defeat that results in the underdevelopment of the part of the brain responsible for impulse control and emotions. As a result of this disorder, however, psychopaths are incapable of empathy and able to form emotional bonds with anyone ironically and frighteningly, it is uncanny ability of psychopaths to mimic empathy, empathy with others that makes them especially dangerous and sisters or serial killers. Because they are so disarming and seemingly non-threatening, the psychopathic predator causes us to lower our guard and put ourselves at a greater risk to their brutality. So a question I want to ask you all is, are you dating someone who is a psychopath? Tells that relationships can disrupt life and introduce influence infinite waves of abuse and pain. It is not uncommon, however, for individuals who have never been involved in this type of romance to wonder if their partner has this disorder. Could there be an underlying neurological cause for the violating of dangerous behaviours? Violating or dangerous behaviours? For some, the answer is yes. Individuals with personality disorders have difficulty relating to others, resulting in rocky relationships. There are some with these conditions that have a high potential to traumatise their mates using their symptom profile. The partners of individuals with psychopathy, narcissistic personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, and antisocial personality disorder are often left with emotional and physical scars. For many of us, it can be difficult to determine if our partner is healthy or if their behaviour patterns are indicative of a problem. Below are a few red flags that many psych with psychopathy have in their past to demonstrate when they interact with others. It's important to note that it's not a list of diagnostic criteria of psychotherapy, it's just a matter of knowing when this is happening and whatnot. So, shifting place are uh, 1. I am superior to you. Individuals with psychopathy can often convey to their mate that they are superior, no, you are superior and their partner is not good enough, e.g. you are stupid, too emotional, fat, insecure, always holding on to the past, paranoid, crazy. Within relationships of this form of type, this partners often feel inferior, worthless, or less than. Their mates often keep off balance, chasing after what they think will appease the disordered partner. 
too. You bore me. I hate you. I love you. No, I hate you. After the honeymoon stage, they are often disinterested, disrespectful, and abusive. Some will introduce their partner to a rollercoaster style relationship, breaking up the memory, you know, repeat. For many involved with a psychopath, the disrespect immediately shifts into abuse and creates a traumatic relationship for the bit for their victim. Given that the brain has a reaction and can be changed by trauma and abuse, many of their partners are left with depression, anxiety, substance abuse, alcoholism and complex PTSD. Sadly, some individuals have resorted to suicide after these relationships. 3. I'm never responsible for anything bad that happens or anything bad I have done. That's the rule. Externalizing blame is quite common for individuals with this personality style. When a problem cannot be wiggled out of with deception, when reframing the violation as a mistake, joke, misunderstanding, or your hypersensitive lessons, they are responsible for the act. Grooming. For grooming. New partners are groomed rather than courted. The difference is that one is a game or ploy grooming, while the other approach attempts to make a genuine connection. Many with psychopathy have a grooming stage when they are pursuing a new partnership. Grooming is intentional manipulation. Their kindness, attention, money, time trips and presents come with strings attached. They expect their partners to fall in line and repay their honeymoon stages over. Their past may include many romantic partners. Due to a tendency to become bored easily and an inability to bond after the excitement has worn off, they seek out new partners. They may have be an overlap between mates or affairs while still within a serious relationship, however. When in the act of grooming a new talent, they might refer to ex-mates as good friends. Their code for an ex-partner they, they feel doesn't hold them accountable or bother them regarding the abuse of the they inflicted on or crazy. Their code up for an ex-partner they traumatise and wants closure, revenge or currently seeks to hold them accountable for the abuse. Extremely high sense of towards self. Who's number six I think I'm up to bear with me. <sighs> extremely has to towards self, extremely sensitive towards others. I matter, you don't, and since you don't matter, don't think of giving an opinion about me. Although they usually come across as pivotal, narcissistic and coarse, it is often surprising to others when they witness the extreme hypersensitive psychopaths demonstrate when they feel criticized like to it all challenge. It doesn't seem from insecurity and are not interested in appeasing others. It is primarily associated with their belief in their superiority and power. They are intolerant of their weakness being highlighted or anyone speaking to them in a manner that implies they are inferior or weak. Many with psychopathy will attack anyone will feel committed such as infraction. I'm the winner always. For individuals with psychopathy, there has to be a winner and a loser. Being a winner is very important to them. They rarely accept being in a lesser position regardless of how small the situation is. This, of course, poses a problem given that relationships of all types require cooperation and at times submission or contribution. You might feel like you are losing your mind, thinking abilities and confidence begin to weaken. For those who have been in relations of this kind for extended periods of time, it is not uncommon to experience problems with thinking, memory concentration, tension, motivation and organization may begin to feel compromised. You might feel scatterbrained, less efficient overall and flooded with anxiety, power control and domination. They enjoy degrading, humiliating, dominating, damaging ability in others. However, most will not tolerate those traits being pointed out to them. This could easily result in an aggressive reaction which is rage and punishment, lies, secrets and deception. Deceptive and manipulation of Deception and manipulation are common for those with psychopathy. They lie overtly as well as by omission. The lies can be minor or of significant manager, e.g. secret children, current manager or mate, and a dinner that isn't true. Questionable morals. This is often long-standing pattern of social transgressions and poor morals. Examples include, but not limited to, cheating, lying, corporate infringements, stealing, harassment, stalking or punishing anyone that stands in the way of the above. Shallow and superficial emotions. Special interactions often sell out and far exceed their capacity for deep relationships. For example, they will treat a stranger better than their spouse if it makes them look pale on a source of envy. Another one is, but I'm the victim here. This is a form of manipulation that is often implemented when they interact with empathetic individuals. When they have compassion for someone, we are primed to excuse their transgressions. Individuals with the capacity for empathy could potentially be manipulated to adopt the stance of hurt people hurt people. Individuals with psychopathy use this mode of manipulation for precisely that reason alone. It lets them off the hook for behaviour they truly intentionally engage in for their own gain. Triangulation. New partners 
might find themselves in competition with old partners, requires lessons and basic social skills regarding kindness and respect. You find yourself telling him or her the bare basics of human kindness, fairness, and how to treat you, e.g. don't speak to me that way, please stop lying, why do you have to be so harsh and mean to me? If a person has empathy and absence of psychopathology, we don't need to do this type of teaching for anyone over seven years old. Very little you do is right, no matter how hard you try. There, were, there may be accusations regarding your sensitivity, lack of understanding, intrusiveness or unworthiness as a supporter partner. Example, your outfit is trampy, the house isn't clean, you don't look good anymore. Why you're so sensitive, it's annoying. Any requests or demands you make on the relationship are framed as attempts at control. For example, normal constant and acceptable checking in that is common between couples associated with respect and love might not be tolerated by someone with personality style. So, you may be questioning now, how do you know that you're dealing with a sociopath? Other years, neurobiologists have identified identified several factors that are highly correlated or associated with violent behaviour in people. First, the failure to develop adequate coping mechanisms in childhood, which has been associated with violent behaviour later in life. Second, neglect and abuse by caregivers during childhood have been linked to an increased risk of adult violence. Third, substance abuse, alcohol and drugs is highly correlated with increased aggression and violence in adolescents and adults. Fourth, child has brain trauma due to severe head injury during childhood has been linked by neuro Religious to violent behaviour in adulthood. Each and one of these correlates of violence that is factors which are often found in combination with it has been observed among violent criminals and or murderers over the years. Although these factors have been scientifically linked to their violent behaviour, none of them either individually or collectively should be considered sufficient or even necessary for an individual to become violent. In order to understand violent behaviour, it is necessary to know some fundamental principles about human personality first. The personalities of people represent who they are and how they behave. Personalities result from genetics and upbringing and reflect how people view the world and believe the world views them. Personalities dictate how people interact with others and how they cope with problems both real and imagined. Human personalities develop and evolve until some time around their late 20s. After that, human personalities are hard well static and can be altered. Forensic psychologists have discovered that certain key traits of violent behaviours are very consistent with an antisocial personality disorder known as sociopathy. This disorder is manifested in manifested in certain distinct and troublesome behavioural traits and characteristics. Sociopathy isn't classed as mental illness. Again, obviously sociopathy is listed basically under the heading of antisocial personality disorders. A the APAE estimates that there are approximately 8 million sociopaths in the US alone. Therefore, many of us may know one and may be related to one or intimately involved with one. Sociopathy is characterized by the following personality and behavioral traits. A disregard for laws and social mores, a disregard for the rights of others, a failure to feel remorse or guilt, a tendency to display violent behavior and a more emotional burst outburst. Sociopaths tend to be volatile. That is, they tend to be nervous and easily agitated or angered. They are volatile and prone to emotional outbursts, including fits of rage. In addition, they may be uneducated and live on the fringes of traditional society and are unable to hold a city job. And they are often frequent like transit, transients and drifters. It is difficult but impossible for sociopaths to form attachments with others. They are capable of bonding emotionally and whatnot. They are capable of bonding emotionally and d demonstrating empathy with certain people in certain situations but not others. Many sociopaths are able to form an attachment to a particular individual or group. They have no regard for society in, gen in general or its rules. In the eyes of others, sociopaths will typically appear to be very disturbed. It is believed that, however, the sociopathy is the result of nature environment rather than nature genetics. According to David A. Levin, like I said, but just to end this, the good news about sociopaths is that due to their volatile personalities, you can typically see them coming forewarned and is forearmed. So this quickly ends basically psychopath and so sociopath. What is the difference? Give me a like for thumbs up. Comment below. Feel free to follow me on my social media sites. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Feel free to follow share these videos along I should say feel free to turn on the notification bell so you know what's going on with me so in all the do guys thanks for support thanks for watching do what you love love what you do until next time SB signing out and I'll see you again soon ciao for now bye